We've spent quite a bit of time discussing all of the different shapes that you need to be familiar with in grade 10 geometry. And in this lesson, we're going to be talking about a way that we are going to need to know how to represent those shapes. And that is to draw those shapes on a Cartesian plane. So the first thing that I want to go over is the idea of different points being represented in the Cartesian plane. And those points are going to represent the vertices of our shapes. So let me give you an example so that you know what I mean by that. Let's say we were given the following series of coordinates. We were told that point A is at 7 and 6. That is when x is equal to 7 and y is equal to 6. We're told that point B is when x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 6. Point C is going to be when x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2. And point D is going to be when x is equal to 6 and y is equal to 2. So this is our standard way of representing coordinates on a Cartesian plane. We know our first number is going to be our x-coordinate and our second number is going to be our y-coordinate. So that's nothing out of the ordinary. This is already something that we should be familiar with as a way of representing certain points on a Cartesian plane. These points are actually going to make up the vertices of our shape. So let's start out by just plotting these points on our Cartesian plane. So let's start out with point A. Point A is going to be when x is equal to 7 and y is equal to 6. So x is equal to 7 will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's going to be over here. And y is equal to 6 will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That will be that point up there. So this is going to be point A. Now we can do the same thing for point B, that is when x is equal to 2, which is going to be right here, and y is equal to 6. So again, that is going to be up here where y is equal to 6, and here is where x is equal to 2. So this is going to be point B. And we can do the same thing with point C, that is when x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2. So here we have x is equal to 1, and here we have y is equal to 2. So that is going to be our point C. And D is going to be when x is equal to 6 and y is equal to 2. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over here. And y is equal to 2 is over here. And that is point D. And what we have done with these four points is we have actually drawn out the four vertices of our shape. So we know from our previous videos that the vertex is going to be where our line segments are going to join together and they create angles at these vertices when our line segments join together. So these four vertices are going to create a shape. It's going to be a quadrilateral since it's going to have four vertices. And the shape is going to be known as shape A, B, C, D. So if we call this shape A, B, C, D, then the way that we need to draw our line segments is to connect point A to point B, point B to point C, point C to point D, and then D back to A. So that is going to be the convention when you are connecting these vertices in a Cartesian plane. However, the shape is labeled. So this shape is known as shape ABCD. That is going to give us a hint as to which line segments need to be joined together. So we know by this naming convention that if our shape is shape ABCD, our line has to connect A to B, B to C, and C to D, and D back to A. If our shape was named shape B, C, D, A, then we would connect B to C, C to D, D to A, and A back to B. So that is just a note on the convention. When you are given the name of the shape, the order of these vertices is going to tell you how you are going to connect your points together. So for our shape, it was shape A, B, C, D. So we know that we are going to join point A to point B, then point B to point C, point C to point D, and point D back to point A. So we have just constructed our first shape in our Cartesian plane when we were just given the coordinates of our vertices. So we can see here that we have created what looks like a parallelogram. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say you were told that there is a shape a, B, C, 
where point A is going to have coordinates of 4 and negative 3, point B is going to have coordinates of 1 and negative 8, and point C is going to have coordinates of 4 and negative 8. Well, let's start out by drawing our first vertex that is going to be at point A, where our x value is 4 and our y value is negative 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, that's going to be our x value, and 1, 2, 3, in the negatives, that is going to be our y value. So here we have point A. Point B is when x is equal to 1, that's going to be here, and when y is equal to negative 8. So that's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, and negative 8. That's right at the bottom over here. That is going to be point B. Then point C is when x is equal to 4 and y is equal to negative 8. So we know here is negative 8, and over here is when x is equal to 4. So our point C is going to be right here. And we know because this is shape A, B, C, that the way that we need to do this is that we connect A to B first, then we're going to connect B to C, and then we connect C back to A. And we can see here we have what looks like a right angle triangle. These two lines are perpendicular, so this is going to be a 90 degree angle. And we will also know some information about the length of two of our sides at least. We know the length of side BC and the length of side AC because it is going directly across the x-axis or up the y-axis. So we can see that BC is going to have a value of 1, 2, 3 units. It goes across 3. We know that AC is going to have a value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units. And because we have a right angle here and we have the length of these two sides, we can also work out the length of the hypotenuse using Pythagoras. So we know that AB is going to be equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 3 squared, which is the square root of 25 plus 9, which is the square root of 34. Let's go over one more example. Here we are given a shape, shape A, B, C, D. And let's say in this case we are asked what is the coordinate of point C. So we're given this shape which looks like it could be a kite and we're asked to determine the coordinate of this point, point C. To do that we just need to look at point C and determine where it is on the x-axis and where it is on the y-axis. So if we take point C and if we were to extend a line down from point C to meet with our x-axis, we can see that point C is going to be when x is equal to negative 4. If we extend a point C to our y-axis, we are going to see that point C is going to be where y is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the coordinates of point C is going to be when x is equal to negative 4 and when y is equal to 7. So when you're drawing figures on a Cartesian plane, you will either be given a series of coordinates and you will have to draw those shapes based on the coordinates that you're given, or you might be given a shape that's already drawn on a Cartesian plane. And from that shape, you have to find the coordinates of the different vertices. But that is going to summarize how you can do that. And in the next video, we're going to go further into analyzing different shapes and different points on a Cartesian plane and how we can determine the distances between two points based on what we have learned in our last few videos.